when there's a crash, I hope it's going to be during this next 12 months, because I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. The one president, I just don't want to be Herbert Hoover. That's Donald Trump hoping that the economic crash happens in the next 12 months. Love to have right wing populism. Oh, just, you know, people like Trump who understand the struggles of working Americans, those who have the least. He's not there for the wealthy. He's just hoping that the economy crashes in the next 12 months, which would be absolutely devastating. In 2008, when the economy crashed, people lost their homes, people lost their, their businesses, they were put out on the street. People's plans and financial lives, their futures that they had imagined vanished. And he's hoping that it happens in the next 12 months. He's saying it's going to happen anyway. I don't, I don't want it to happen under me. I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. But he wants it to happen in the next 12 months. He'll be president for at least part of that. So he doesn't <laughs> seem to mind that the crash happens as long as it happens ideally before he becomes president. So he won't be blamed for it. If you are a not well off right winger, a poor conservative, he doesn't give a damn about what this would mean to you and your family. And I think that if the Biden team doesn't put that in ads between now and election day, then that is a massive dereliction of duty. Jackson, what do you think? Oh, yeah, you know, I, I hope the economy crashes because that'd be really good for my prospects. I mean, because, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of the economic forecast was that the economy was supposed to, to go down. Another problem that Trump has for his general election campaign. And keep in mind, that hasn't begun yet. Another big, he doesn't have a general election campaign. <laughs> One of his biggest problems is he's already been president. What is what, what is he going to talk about? The, the, the economy was better. With, no, it wasn't. The economy's better now than it was when you were in office. And it always blows my mind. And I, I think I may have said this on the power panel. When Donald Trump was in office, the entire country shut down for a year and yeah. millions of people lost their jobs. Well, you, you know, and of course, Republicans didn't, you know, didn't blame the guy at the helm of the nation. But that's going to come back to what are you going to talk about health care? What are you going to The only way he yeah. would have a campaign is if the economy crashed. So, yeah. you know, it, it's just Republicans really should have went with somebody else, but they didn't. Even if he wins, they should have went with somebody else. Yeah, well, look, the courts might save them. We'll see, Maybe. but yeah, just Maybe. devastating. And like, to, so I, I hate, I, I hate getting into the economic like indicators or whatever because there are like the high level indicators that are better than expected. Two hundred sixteen thousand jobs in December of twenty twenty three, unemployment rate at three point seven percent, which is exceeds what economists were saying was going to happen. Inflation rate dropped from nine point one percent in June of twenty twenty two to three point one percent November. Because you say all these numbers, and like theoretically, that's the sort of stuff that is moving in Biden's direction, so that'll help him for re-election and hurt the case of the Republicans. But you look at that, and you know, but that seems to have less of an influence or less of a connection, a relationship to the experience that that people have with the economy yeah. than it has in past decades. So, like, we have to acknowledge those numbers because they're true. But we can't just worship those numbers because people are still hurting and being left behind. So, and so which of those two, I think, I would argue, realities are going to drive the election? The raw numbers that are true, but don't seem to matter as much as they did, or what people think numbers be damned, um, or at least the numbers we focus on be damned. So we're going to have to see. I don't know. You, you've given me some, some cause perhaps for optimism. Well, um, we'll check I, in throughout here. Just last last quick, point goes to you. It'll, it'll be a bit of both, but my point is that the Republicans would have a better case to make. They would have a case to make with somebody fresh because the more that it the closer it gets to election and people are actually talking, the more it's going to be like, well, you were already in there. And again, that doesn't mean that Trump can't yeah. still win, but just like from a pure political perspective, it's like, well, if you would have had somebody who wasn't president, they could be like, well, we're going to do even better. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And they're, they're going to have to spend this year trying to remind people of what that was like because he is not the outsider anymore. He yeah. was president. Yeah. 
Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.